Hello, good morning friends. Welcome back to your favorite channel Code One Digest. Today in this video, we will learn about Saga design pattern for microservices. I'll explain what is Saga design pattern, where to use it and what are the advantages of this pattern. I'll also give you a real world example of this design pattern. So stay tuned. It is going to be very exciting and there is a lot of learning in this video. Friends, in the previous video, we discussed about event sourcing design pattern. Do you know what is event sourcing design pattern? Can you explain what is event sourcing design pattern? Provide your answer in the comment section of this video. If you have not seen that video, so please go and watch that video. Link is provided on your screen and also given in the description section of this video. So for more information, go and watch the previous video on Code One Digest channel. There's no agenda here. Friends, here is the agenda of this video. I will give you the introduction of Saga design pattern. Then I'll show you the real world example of Saga design pattern. Then we'll see where to use Saga design pattern in our project, in which scenario the Saga design pattern is the solution to the problem. Then we'll understand the benefits of using Saga design pattern. Then I'll summarize what is Saga design pattern. And at the end, I'll also touch upon what is our next video in this design pattern series. So stay tuned. Do watch this video till end. It is going to be a lot of learning and it is going to be exciting. So keep watching Code One Friends, before we proceed in this video, I request you to subscribe this channel to grow Code One Digest family. Friends, I'm creating a lot of quality videos on programming, coding concepts, design pattern and design principles, cloud and container technologies, but I'm not getting subscribers. I request you to like, share and subscribe this channel so that I can grow our Code One Digest family. Thank you. All right, let's get started. Okay, friends, so now let's start with the Saga design pattern. This is the fifth and the last design pattern in database design pattern category. The Saga design pattern is a way to manage data consistency across the microservices in distributed transaction scenario. The Saga is a sequence of transaction that updates each service and publishes a message or event to trigger the next transaction step. If a step fails, then Saga executes compensating transaction that counteract the preceding transaction. The term Saga refers to long-lived transaction and abbreviated as segregated access of global atomicity. The Saga pattern is a failure management pattern that helps establish consistency in distributed application and coordinate transaction between multiple microservices to maintain the data consistency. A microservice publishes an event for every transaction and next transaction is initiated based on the event's outcome. It can take two different paths depending on the success or failure of the transaction. A transaction is a single unit of logic or a work sometimes made up of multiple operations within a transaction. An event is a state change that occurs in a entity and a command encapsulates all information needed to perform an action or trigger a later event. Transaction must be atomic, consistent, isolated and durable. Transaction within a single service are acidic that is atomic, consistent, isolated and durable. But data consistency requires a cross service transaction management strategy. In multi-service architecture, in microservice architecture, atomicity is an indivisible and irreducible set of operation that must all occur or none occur. Consistency means the transaction brings the data only from one valid state to another valid state. Isolation guarantees that concurrent transaction produces the same data state that sequentially executed transaction would have produced. Durability ensures that committed transactions remains committed even in case of system failure or power outage. 
Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Good plan. Good talk, all right? Now let's understand the saga design pattern with a real world example. In this example, we are showing how a saga pattern is implementing an order processing system. Each step has a separate step to handle the success or failure of the process. Each step has a two next step based on success or a failure of the process. Let's understand the saga pattern with another example. Let's understand the problem statement first. Database per microservice model provides many benefits for microservice architecture. That is, encapsulating the domain data lets each service use its best data store type and schema. Scale its own data storage as required and be insulated from other services failures. However, ensuring the data consistency across service specific database poses challenges. B. Another option that we can think of is the two-phase commit protocol that requires all participants in a transaction to commit or roll back before the transaction can proceed. However, we have certain setbacks with this approach where NoSQL database and message brokering don't support this model. Hence, the solution to this problem is Saga pattern. Saga pattern provides transaction management using a sequence of local transactions. Local transaction is an automatic work effort performed by a Saga participant. Each local transaction updates the database and publishes a message or event to trigger the next local transaction in the Saga. If a local transaction fails, the Saga executes a series of compensating transactions that undo the changes that were made by preceding local transactions. What? I can, I, I do, I do not understand. There are two common Saga implementation approaches. Each approach has its own sets of challenges and technology to coordinate the workflow. Let's understand the choreography first. Choreography is a way to coordinate Saga where participants exchange the events without a central point of control. With choreography, each microservice runs its own local transaction and publishes the event to the message broker system that triggers the local transaction in another microservices, as you can see in the example in your screen. The benefit of this approach is good for the simple workflow that requires few participants and don't need a coordination logic doesn't require additional service implementation or maintenance doesn't introduce a single point of failure since the responsibility are distributed across the saga participants it do have few drawbacks like workflow can become confusing when adding new steps it's difficult to track which saga participant listen to which command there is a risk of cyclic dependency between saga participant because they have to consume each other commands. Integration testing is difficult because all services must be running to simulate a transaction. Wow. Let's see another way of implementing Saga pattern that is orchestration. Orchestration is a way to coordinate Saga where a centralized controller tells the Saga participants what local transactions to execute. The Saga orchestrator handles all the transactions and tells the participant which operation to perform based on events. The orchestrator executes Saga requests, stores and interprets the states of each task and handles the failure recovery with compensating transaction. The central controller microservice orchestrates the Saga workflow and invoke to execute local microservices transactions in sequential order. The orchestrator microservices execute Saga transaction and manage them in centralized way. And if one of these steps is failed, then execute the rollback step with compensating transactions. Let's see some of the benefits of this approach. It is good for complex workflow involving many participants or new participants added over time. 
suitable when there is a control over every participant in a process and control over the flow of activities doesn't introduce a cyclic dependencies because the orchestrator unilaterally depends on the saga participant saga participant don't need to know about command for other participant clear separation of concern simplify business logic it does have some of the drawbacks like additional design complexity requires an implementation of coordination logic this could be a single point of failure because the orchestrator manages the complete workflow as we are discussing the saga design pattern let's also throw some light on two phase commit pattern the two phase commit could be a alternative to saga pattern but let's understand what are the advantages and disadvantages we get from two phase commit and whether can we use the two phase commit or can we replace the saga pattern with a two phase commit approach the two phase commit protocol is a widely used pattern to implement distributed transaction in microservices in two phase commit protocol there is a coordinator component that is responsible for controlling the transaction and contains the logic to manage the transaction the other component is the participating nodes example microservices that run their local transactions as the name indicates two phase commit protocol runs a distributed transaction in two phase that is first phase is prepare phase the coordinator asks the participant nodes whether they are ready to commit the transaction the participant return with yes or no response second phase is the commit phase if all the participants node respond affirmatively in the phase 1 the coordinator asks all of them to commit the transaction if at least one node returns a negative then coordinator asks all the participant to roll back their local transactions although two phase commit is useful to implement a distributed transaction but it also has few drawbacks like the coordinator node can become the single point of failure all other services need to wait until the slowest service finishes its confirmation so the overall performance of the transaction is bound by the slowest service the two phase commit protocol is slow by design due to chattiness and dependency on the coordinator so it can lead to the scalability and performance issues in the microservice based architecture involving multiple services two phase commit protocol is not supported in no sql database therefore in microservice architecture where one or more services using no sql database we can't apply a two phase commit solution there this is a major fallback of two phase commit design pattern now let's understand the difference between the saga and two phase commit design pattern two phase commit work as a single commit and aim to perform acid transactions in distributed system it is used wherever a strong consistency is important on the other hand saga works sequentially not as a single commit each operation gets committed before the subsequent one and this makes the data eventually consistent wow that's amazing friends now let's see some of the use cases of saga design pattern let's understand the scenario where saga design pattern could be a solution use saga design pattern when application need to maintain data consistency across multiple microservices without a tight coupling use saga design pattern when there are long lived transactions and you don't want other microservices to be blocked if one microservice runs for a longer time use saga design pattern whenever you need to be able to roll back if an operation fails in the sequence use this pattern to ensure data consistency in distributed system without tight coupling use this pattern to roll back or compensate if one of the operation in the sequence fails the saga design pattern is less suitable for tight coupling transactions what the hell are these things 
friends now let's see some of the advantage of this design pattern what are the benefits we get out of saga design pattern saga design pattern is the best way to handle distributed transaction across the microservices saga design pattern makes transaction management loosely coupled and message driven saga design pattern are well suited to a transaction that have a small number of steps though we have seen some of the advantages of saga design pattern it does has some downfall saga is a complex to manage particularly if a transaction has a large number of steps and the environment is asynchronous saga design pattern requires a good deal of programming particularly to support rollback in an asynchronous message driven environment you're good okay friends now let me summarize what we learned in this video today i gave you introduction of saga design pattern then i gave you real world example of saga design pattern i also shown you the use cases and scenarios where saga design pattern can be very useful we also saw the advantages and disadvantages of saga design pattern what are the complexity involved using saga design pattern so friends let me know if you have already used this design pattern in your project or seen a scenario where this pattern can be useful so provide your answer in the comment section of this video god damn right friend in the next video i am going to discuss about log aggregator design pattern i will tell you what is log aggregator design pattern then i'll show you the real world example of log aggregator design pattern we'll understand the use cases of log aggregator design pattern in which scenario we can use log aggregator design pattern then we'll also discuss the benefits of log aggregator design pattern so stay tuned for the next video and keep watching code one digest if you are new to the channel so do subscribe to our channel to grow code one digest family oh wow that is really that's amazing friends if you like this video so give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for the more interesting videos click on the bell icon for the latest video notifications and do not forget to share this video with all your friends and colleagues this is very useful information for students beginners and software engineers i am putting a lot of efforts in creating this contents so please help me growing the code one digest family please subscribe to code one digest channel for the latest programming and technology related videos thank you